Edmund Gill is one of the pioneers in abstraction in Barbadian art. He was born in Barbados and migrated to the United Kingdom in 1955 as a result of Hurricane Janet. So while he was there, he happened to meet other Caribbean people who were living in London at that time. During this period, he would do a lot of research. He started, he continued his painting, which would have started in Barbados. And he did a lot of research into what was happening politically among the African nations that were gaining independence. He did um, explore African history because he would have access to places like the British Museum and so on to gather this kind of information. He would have seen work by persons like Frank Bowling, who's from Guyana and an abstract painter at that period of time. And he became essentially a Pan-Africanist which affected the kind of the quality of the work he was doing. He did work on those emerging nations, Barbados as it was when he returned in 1971. He um, worked as a graphic designer at a certain point in his career and I think that sense of design played a part in his, his approach to certain works such as the Emancipation series where there's more of a, almost poster type quality where you're bringing in different elements and text and so on into the uh, composition of the work. Edmund was a wonderful colorist as you can see from this particular piece in the exhibition which remains untitled. Um, there's, when you look at it you see almost tones of different colors you see shapes and the abstract work is not just pattern making. It was inspired by different ideas, but it was not that he was conveying those ideas in a representational manner. One of his great enthusiasms was jazz music. And he shared this enthusiasm with many of the people in Clam, especially Kamau Brathwaite. This, there's a series of works by Edmund Gill where he was trying to find visual representations of music as opposed to an illustration of a song. It would be a representation of, through marks, through lines, as to what he's trying to capture in the sound he was listening to. And this particular piece that we have here, which as I said is untitled, is very much in that kind of genre. When you look at it, you can see lines, it's done on hardboard, it's not a canvas, and he worked a lot in hardboard at that time, because hardboard, working on hardboard, allows you to carve into the surface. So you emphasize certain lines by carving into the surface, and this is what he's done in this painting. And there are areas where you're getting different tones, the lines are repeated, and this, as you can imagine, you can almost hear a sound when you look at it. The lines are more gentle and melodious as opposed to areas where there might be, and nearly the whole of this is very gentle like that, but there are pops of color, which would be, I guess, surprising elements and sounds within the music. So when you look at it, you bear all of that in mind, um, which is, something that you work with. The center of interest, I would say, is in the area where you get those circles roughly of the same size, the yellow, green, and red um, circles. I always make the comparison when a person say they don't understand abstract art, that when I listen to opera and I listen to dub music, I don't know what they're saying in a lot of cases because they're in a language with which I'm unfamiliar. But I can respond to the music. I can give myself over to the music and enjoy it. In the same way, I would give myself over to the, the shapes and the colors and the composition because composition becomes even more vital when you're working in a non-representational way as Edmund is. And it, it, is, it opens itself up to a dialogue, well, 
figurative paintings do too, a dialogue with the viewer, where the viewer is bringing to the work their own experiences, their own feelings about what is before them and trying to interpret it. Now, in my case, because, and this is where it's useful if you are familiar with the body of work by the artist and the development of that artist's work. I am familiar with the fact that he's a Pan-Africanist and I see in it that mass type shape. The red and the green you get in many flags that is uh, in Africa and elsewhere where there are a lot of black communities. Edmund would not, did not realize that when he exhibited his work at the many galleries that existed in Barbados at the time, the Hilton Gallery, the Bay Gallery, the Pelican Gallery, and all of those smaller galleries. He didn't realize at the time what an influence he was on many young artists producing work in those days. Um, but I was one of those artists who was very influenced by him and the kind of work he was producing and I was very excited by it as an artist myself. And this is pre-embarking on a study in um, fine art at university. So it's, it's nice to see, to have had the privilege of being the curator of a retrospective exhibition of his work, which took place in 2019 and was extremely well at Queen's Park Gallery and it was extremely well received. And it was wonderful to see the development of his ideas over those years because he's now in his early 80s so to bring all this work together has, was a fabulous experience.